Major Obstacles to Small Farm Viability, Unit 5. As we talk about the opportunities in small farm and the fact that those opportunities are growing, I think we have to be realistic in the fact that there are some obstacles to small farm development. And during this unit, I want to talk about some of those obstacles and, and some of the things you have to consider. Again, this class is one, a self-evaluation class where you're going to try to determine if small farm production is something that you are going to be interested in. Small farm is hard work, and I think we, we just have to be upfront. and it's hard work you have frustrations with the weather and mother nature doesn't always uh, cooperate and I think we need to um, to keep that in mind along with these other obstacles of which we're going to talk about as we go along as you've read Henry's farm book I think you have a pretty good understanding of what I'm talking about with the hard work and the long hours you know when the time is right you have to be ready to go and can't necessarily watch the clock and every day is a new opportunity to show some success um, this year the weather has not been very very cooperative last year we had a terrible drought and this year it won't quit raining and so weather is always a problem and I believe livestock is an important feature of the farm, but you have to take care of the livestock every day, and that's something that not everybody is willing to do. As our generations became further and further removed from the farm, I think understanding of how to farm and what it takes to be a farmer have been lost and people think growing vegetables are really difficult and it's not but you do have to have some knowledge and I hope some of the things we're doing here at the college is helping with some of that training um, that was required one of my one of my friends was saying that um, they had some people over and the kids just kept saying my chicken has bones my chicken has bones and so they didn't even realize that chicken had, had bones because nobody was buying uh, chicken with bones at their house. It was, it was processed, it was chicken breast, and they didn't even realize that chicken was supposed to have bones. As we talk about the location of the farms, obviously we have to realize that the large urban centers the large cities, Chicago, New York, St. Louis, have a giant need for our local grown food, but not necessarily do they want it growing uh, next door to their subdivision or in the backyard of their subdivision. And, and we just have some subdivision rules that won't allow a garden or won't allow a clothesline. And we're going to have to look at the big picture and consider allowing more food production in an urban area and I, and I think that's a growing trend and, I, and it's a positive trend that if you can take an old abandoned lot in the city and turn that into a small farm that that's a positive for everyone involved the government rules and regulations are not necessarily helping as we talk about um, the government rules and regulations that they set one size does not fit all farms and does not fit all processing facilities and and I think that's a um, that's a hard one to get around uh, it's hard for a small uh, packing plant to meet the same rules as a large packing plant and we understand as we've consolidated our food into less and less companies the foodborne illness outbreaks are going to only worsen as we consolidate those corporations One of the problems I see here in central Illinois is um, not many small meat processing plants. Uh, the large packers are controlling the giant uh, percentage of the market share. Over 80% over of our meat is processed by the four big uh, meat packing plants. 
again, the rules and regulations are the same for um, both organizations, and that's a lot more easier for a large plant to absorb than a small plant. And we have lots of cross-contamination as we do so many animals in one day. And some of the rules for on-farm processing um, need to be looked at and examined. And is there opportunity to do some on-farm processing in poultry or beef or pork that would make it easier for the small farmer to keep his product separate from contamination while providing an opportunity to sell meat and produce to uh, people in his local area. And then where is the everyday marketplace for fruit and vegetable production? Um, one thing that I will say about Walmart is they do a great job of providing that centralized market, that one location where you can buy just about everything. And you can buy it in a lot of places 24 hours a day. But what about our local farmers? And, you know, the Saturday morning farmer, farmer's market is it's pretty successful, but that's one a, once a week for three or four hours. And where do you get your produce the rest of the week? The food hub idea is growing, where the farmers have a centralized location to, to bring their food, and the, and the consumers have the opportunity to go there and purchase. But I think we really, the key to this whole process is that market, the place where the consumers and the producers come together. And that's the weakest link in our food chain right now from the local food perspective. And again, we want to talk about some of the positive sides of a small farm. I think you have to realize that there is the positive. The growing, the demand is growing, the healthier, the tastier, the safer food people are starting to realize is coming from the farm. Backyard chickens and backyard poultry are really gaining in popularity and I just saw that downtown Chicago a couple weekends ago. Two different locations had chickens right there in downtown Chicago. We got to get away from our dependence on oil. And who are going to be our small farmers in the future? And, and I look at, at really three target groups. I look at the 50 something um, person that's getting ready to retire but wants to continue to make some income and doesn't just want to sit on the couch and play golf every day and maybe they have a small acreage. I also look at my young students coming into the college that want to be a farmer and I think we also have to look at uh, corporate America where people are, are tired of sitting in a cubicle and wanting to get outside and, and produce some of their own food and that's a target audience as well.